Hi everyone, this is Kim. Welcome to my channel. This is um, going to be a live and, and uh, I hope to answer all of your questions about projectors today. So if you're thinking about it or if you have one and you can't figure it out or if you're just curious, um, this is the place to be today. So um, and if you're watching it in the replay and you have further questions, you certainly can take them and tag me in it on our Facebook group and I will try and answer the best that I can. I've had mine for about a year now. So, um, and it's been quite a ride, and I have loved it and hated it at the same time, but mostly loved it. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that, how I settled on what I use it for and what I don't use it for. Um, so with that, I'm gonna give us the intro since this is one that people might watch back a lot. So, how is it after one year with my projector? Well, let's see who's here first and um, say hey to everybody. Hi, Joey. Nice to see you. Hang on one second. Somehow I got to get these comments where I can see them. All right. Huh. All right. Hi, Joey. Nice to see you. Good to have you here. And Lynn. Lynn's here, and Elizabeth, and Chris. How is everybody doing? And Barbara, nice to have you with us today. Hello to all the ladies. Yep. Lots of people saying hello. <laughs> so that's good. I'm glad you guys are all here. All right, Lynn says she's curious, curious about projectors. All right, well, so was I. I ended up getting one, and I'm going to just share a little bit. I'm going to be very, um, try to be objective. All right, it's sort of a review, but uh, more of a review of the whole process and would I do it again and all those things. Yay, I'm glad you're here, Barbara. Hey, Verna, you got back, huh? That's great. I hope your scan went okay. <laughs> hope everything's good. Hi, Zella. Nice to see all you guys. All right, so I'm just, I've got a few points that I have, and I, I know we're all dying to talk, and please feel free to jump in and ask anything or, you know, like we usually do. Um, but I also want to kind of cover this because I think people will want to come back and watch this later. So I'm very dry today. All right, how do I feel one year after my projector? I still love it. Um, it is a phenomenal thing for what the times that you can use it, it's phenomenal. Um, and instead of, so I did the projector series, and then the last one was going to be on making adjustments with the, with the um, projector, which I did learn how to do. But my goodness, by the time I spent the hours learning how to do it, and, you know, um, and I'm even familiar with vector programs. So, like, and then there's some, um, there's some pattern companies that won't let you change them. So... You can't do those alterations. So a lot of times the alterations just really weren't even that much of it. They weren't a time saver for sure. So I finally said, you know, maybe it's just one of those things that it's good when it's good. And maybe sometimes um, it's good to have, you know, go back on old faithful ways of doing things. So I kind of came up with a sort of a, I don't know if protocol is the word because I don't really think it out, you know, and I don't make rules for myself. So I don't mean to sound like that. But I did kind of like, I thought it might be good to share, you know, when I do use it and when I don't. So here is my projector and where it's hanging in my ceiling. And um, 
that is, oh, I'm sorry for just being distracted here. I need to go see who had a baby. Yay. Your, her other daughter's expecting. That is unbelievably wonderful. Congratulations. That is awesome, Lynn. All right. So, back to the topic. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> Um, anyway, this is my projector. It's right above me here. And what I did was that's an LED light that's made for a garage. And I took that light and mounted it up on my ceiling. It's like a screw in light bulb type thing. Well, I used one of the um, bases that has a plug so that I didn't have to have any wires coming down or anything. That is just the projector and then it's uh, plugged into the light socket. So it's super easy set up as far as that goes. I obviously didn't do it, I'm not tall enough, but my husband did it for me. My, um, I think my ceiling in here is maybe about eight and a half feet. So it's not super high ceiling, but it works for me. So um, anyway, and then um, Yes, this looks so much like the rest of the thing. I'm moving it here so you can see the picture. All right, so this is um, how I have it mounted uh, up here. And this is my table that I'm presently sitting at, okay? And that is um, how I have it. Now, there is probably, probably seven and a half feet, no more, between the table. Oh, no, no, there's less than that. There's probably, uh, I'm going to say probably six or seven feet between the table and the um, projector. So it's not, it doesn't give me a super wide area. So, um, but it is, oddly enough, the exact uh, measurements of my table. So it works out really well for me. Um, some people have bigger tables. They might want a bigger space, which you would want to have the projector higher or you'd want to have one of the ones that sit on your table and side projects. So there's a really there is a um, solution for everyone. All right. All right. Welcome Shirley. Nice to see you. I went and subscribed to your channel. All right. So um, Next is when I don't use it. Okay, so I'll tell you the negatives first. All right, so when I have maybe one or two pieces that just need adjusting, like um, narrow shoulders, something I do on a lot of patterns, uh, full bicep is another one I do. I just do those pattern pieces. All right, and in, in which case, it might not be the entire pa pattern piece. So if I'm doing a... Um, narrow shoulder, I would just do the, the uh, neckline and arm size and just a little bit down. I wouldn't have to, uh, and I would print that, and I would do that on paper, all right? But I could still project the rest of it and then lay that on top, you know, marking carefully where it goes. So that's another way to do it. Um, the full bi bicep adjustment, I would just print that piece, nothing more, just that piece, and do my uh, full bicep on that. I just, you print less, but for all the things that um, make it tough to do with the projector, it's kind of not worth the time investment, if you know what I mean, at least for me. I know vector programs. I'm not super, super well-versed in Illustrator, but um, I, I'm assuming most people don't really have any training in Illustrator. And if you do, um, then you maybe you know a lot more than me, and so then it would be a lot easier for you. But if you don't know the vector programs at all, just print the pieces that you want to adjust. That's all you have to do. And you don't even, like I said, you don't even have to print the entire piece. You can just print the section that needs the um, adjustment and then just, you know, mark where you cut it so that you can line it up on the, uh, the part that you had already cut with the projector. So that is uh, another way to do it. All right. So, 
Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I had a slide for that. So that's when, when one or two pieces need adjustments. And another one is when there's a lot of super, super small pieces, sometimes, and this is, might just be me, might just be my eyes, but sometimes I get lost in knowing what I cut out and what I didn't get cut out. So um, sometimes I'll just print like the, the projector layout on a piece of paper and cross them off as I go, which works really well. But sometimes when there's just a lot of little pieces like color blocking and things like that, I don't know, sometimes it's just easier to print out the pattern. But there again, it's just, you know, it's just how much time you want to invest in it. All right. Now I'm saying the negatives here. I have a lot of positives to say, so hang in there. Yes, I do use Affinity Designer. I do. Um, I find it a little bit more user friendly than Illustrator. Uh, Illustrator, though, is the the uh, industry standard when it comes to pattern making. Um, so I am actually, you can learn a lot from Pattern Labs in London. They have a website that has a whole bunch of how to do patterns in Illustrator. And I did a little bit of that because I made a pattern for something and I wanted to digitize it, make it a PDF, and that worked out really well. So, um, but I need to like learn I've got a lot to learn when it comes to that. Um, I would love to be able to, you know, make patterns. I have a lot of good ideas, and sometimes it'd be nice to be able to get them on paper. But yes, I do use Affinity Designer, and it, it is a little more user-friendly. Um, but again, a uh, couple pattern companies that won't let you edit their files, um, you, you know, and, and so you really can't. Um, because they're locked, and that Sinclair is one of them, and so is 5 out of 4. So, you know, two of my favorite companies, I, I can't make adjustments on the projector file, which is kind of a bummer. So, let's see. And when I love using it. Okay, so when do I love using it? Um, more often than not. I will tell you, I, I get it out more often than I don't get it out. Well, I don't, it's always out, but you know what I mean? I use it more than I don't use it. Um, for one is when I'm sewing uh, gifts for other people and I'm really not going to make any adjustments um, or maybe just shorten the sleeves. Like for my mother-in-law, I just shorten her sleeves. Um, that is uh, perfect to use the projector because it's quick. And at Christmas time, when you're sewing a whole bunch of things, oh man, does it make it faster. So, so much faster. So if you sew a lot for other people, that is, um, that is definitely. And then sewing for kids, um, you know, they grow. So if you cut out a pattern, a size five pattern, and then six months from now, they're in a size six so you're wasting a lot of paper and kids, you're usually cutting in the straight size anyway. So um, I do love it for kids. So you have a couple of questions. Hi, Chris. <laughs> I don't know why. Can, was there a problem that you couldn't see me? I don't know. I think I was on. What was that name again, Kim? Uh, did you mean the, um, the comp, the software illustrator? Um, I was talking about illustrator. I was talking about affinity designer and I hope I answered your question. If not, let me know what name you're talking about. Cause I'm not sure. All right. Have you ever used a hammered seams to, oh, have you ever hammered seams to make the seam skinnier? Yes. Yes, ma'am. It, it works. Oh, yeah, I have a, uh, it's almost like a meat cleaver or a clapper that you can use. And, you know, if you flatten jean seams, they're so much easier to sew. Yes, definitely that works. A little off topic for right now, but I wanted your question to get answered. Sorry for those that, uh, if, you, if you're trying to follow me, that was, I didn't mean to jump around on you, but... <laughs> Sixty-nine in gray. Also, I'm sixty-four in gray, but I'm hoping that 
I don't have to tell anybody that for a little while, but I've got roots right now. So I missed out on going before my vacation and I just haven't had time, but I'm definitely going to go get a haircut and uh, shorter than usual before my surgery and of course get my grace touched up. So got to do that. <laughs> All right, another time that I really like using it is when I'm sewing tried and true patterns. For instance, so I do uh, I do the narrow shoulder adjustment for my classic tee, all right? And, you know, the paper gets old and it starts wearing out. So sometimes what I do is I take it, and I did do a video on this, I believe, the one of the last ones before uh, the end of the uh, projector series, you can digitize your patterns by laying them down with a ruler and you can trace around it and then making sure that you're, um, you're to scale. And I have done that with a few tried and true patterns like the classic T. That way you just pull up your projector, throw your, your uh, tracing down and cut it out. That's, you know, super easy. And another way, for the same reason, the, um, or the same way, uh, another reason, is that if you have a, uh, let's say you have a shirt that's ready to wear, and you really would like it, and you want to copy it, you can actually set up, you know, calibrate the projector, and um, do the pieces, you know, copy the pieces onto a pattern by using your projector and the piece of clothing. Um, sometimes not super easy. Sometimes you might have to take something apart. Um, but for the most part, you can just do it flat. Um, I did my mother-in-law's uh, favorite pants and she had asked me to hem them. So I hemmed them. And before I gave them back to her, I made a, a, a pattern of them. Keep in mind, though, if you do that, you have to add your seam allowances because you're doing the outside of the garment and the seam allowances aren't counted in there. So, <laughs> all right, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Sorry, it's really bad right now. <laughs> wow. Happy birthday, almost. I'm going to turn 65 in November. Lots of things change then. <laughs> I get to go on Medicare. <laughs> Trying to use a projector with black fabric, I can get the color of the lines to change to white. Yes. So I'm going to take my iPad here and show you. All right. So if you have, I'm going to open up Affinity Designer. And I'm going to pull up a pattern. All right. Okay, so this is a leg rose, I think, for kids or maybe for adults. Yeah. All right, so this is the Allegro. All right, so I had uh, traced around there and made them green, okay? But if all I wanted to do was make those white, if you have an iPad, you can do this. If you're on a computer, you can do it by there's a, somewhere there's got to be an invert button. But with my iPad, if I do one, two, three, it switches to being um, black and then changes the color to something lighter. So that's a perfect thing to use for black fabric. Hopefully that helps. I'm trying not to miss questions here. So Carla says, I have not used PDF Stitcher yet, so she can probably answer some questions on that. Uh, let's see, where is it? Carla said, I recently ran a Sinclair projector file through the PDF Stitcher went away. Sorry, Carly. Okay. Through PDF Stitcher and saved it as a separate file. 
I was able to make and save changes in Adobe, the free one, using comment drawing tools and connected lines. Good. That's awesome. Um, PDF Stitcher, if you're not familiar with it, is a program that you can take some a pattern that doesn't have a projector file, or in this case, doesn't have one that you can edit. And then what you're going to do is run it through this, and it'll stitch all the, the uh, pages together into a um, PDF file. And sometimes what I like to do is, if you, as long as you can calibrate it, I use the copy shop pattern file. Um, as long as you can make sure that you have a grid, sometimes you might have to go and enable a grid of some kind um, and make sure that that one by one thing is on there or the four by four or whatever you're using and make sure it's calibrated and you can use the copy shop file. I've done that on a couple of purses, um, you know, when they're just small pieces. Um, that works out really well, too. Ah, Kathy, what day? What day in November? Joey loves PDF Stitcher. You know, I have not even downloaded it yet, so maybe I need to do that. Um, I, thanks for that reminder. <laughs> um, I've just been using the copy shop files when there weren't a, um, wasn't a, projector file so but that's a great idea now somebody asked me about Ellie and Mac yes I can open them in affinity designer without any problem and I believe I can make adjustments on those um, they're not locked or anything um, the um, Ellie and Mac does not have projector files in every single pattern. So that's one thing to check. Um, most, most of them now, the newer ones for sure. So, by the way, they're getting ready to have a um, clearance sale where they, they're going to like take down a whole bunch of patterns that are older. And there's some good ones in there, so they're only going to be $3. If you um, want some old tried and true ones, uh, check that out. I don't know why they get rid of them, you know, because there's some of them are really good. All right. Sandy says she would like her patterns printed in AO, but can't seem to find a coffee copy shop that understands what I'm talking about. There are, um, through the mail ones, uh, that are really good. Uh, I'm trying to think of, I've not ever done it. So, um, I really don't know. I will find out for you though, um, because there are some really good ones and you can send them through the mail and they will send it back to you um, with all the sizes on it, I understand, unless you specify, I guess. And it's just, uh, people swear by it. Um, but then again, you've got shipping and you still have to pay for the print. So, you know, um, it's hard hard to decide. It's hard for me to spend that money when I could just print it myself. And I have an Epson Eco Tank, so it costs me almost nothing to print them. And I just can't, you know, I can't, what's the word, justify the um, sending away for those uh, prints. And there is nowhere local for me either. Um, but even so, it's still not a... <laughs> um, it's still not a, um, you still have to pay for the print, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Ah, Kathy, mine is the 18th. So we're going to, we should celebrate. <laughs> yeah, turning 65 is kind of a milestone. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good milestone or a bad milestone. Um, so what is a good, easy to use I'm assuming you mean software, so you can make alterations. Well, that depends. Um, I like Affinity Designer, uh, but and you can make alterations, but you have to learn how to do manipulate the vectors. So if you've never used a vector program, it's a little bit um, daunting at first. But there are courses out there on like Udemy 
and Skillshare that teach you how to do uh, Illustrator and or Affinity Designer and or Illustrator, um, either one. And really, once you know one, it it transfers to the other pretty well because the the lingo is the same. You know what you're going to do is the same. So, but it's it's not super easy to do. Um, another way that I've done is to uh, put it in like Photoshop and you know in the layers and then you know sort of rasterize the layers and then you can do your adjustment by you know cutting and moving and stuff like that um, without having to decide which segments and curves and that you're going to move so that that's another way to do it um, not it's a little less in accuracy I mean a little harder to be accurate not less but harder so um, yeah it's just kind of a you know it, it's it's one of those things that's just not super easy to do um, which is why I was wasting so much time trying to get a system down for myself that it just didn't you know it just didn't and then I finally thought I had it and I opened up a uh, Sinclair pattern I'm like now what am I supposed to do you know so I just decided you know what I'm just gonna print that sleeve and make my adjustment you know and so it's just you gotta just one you know one for the other but when you can use it especially when I sew for my husband he doesn't really have very many adjustments um, mostly only length so that's super easy to do with a projector and so that's that's fine um, but and when I sew for myself if the if I don't need the bicep adjustment then I can do it um, the bicep adjustment is pretty hard to do on um, on the uh, in the software so you have to slice it more you know you have to slice it into four pieces and then pull those corners apart which sounds really easy but figuring out which layers that have to be connected it's not it's not as easy as it looks Hmm, trying to get rid of this comment that is not appropriate. Hi, Mina Row. Nice to see you. <laughs> Verna says, I think I'm too old to take up that much time to learn projectors. I don't mind printing them. And that's certainly, you know, I, I'm bent that way, so I knew that I would love it. Um, and I do. I really do. There's only certain instances where, you know, I just feel like you're fighting like doing a whole bunch of things that 
you know, but that doesn't mean you throw the baby out with the bathwater. You just like print those pieces, just only those pieces that you need to adjust. All right. All right, uh, if you're seeing there's someone being kind of a troll here, um, bordering on really, really inappropriate, so I apologize for that. I'm taking care of it. All right. Good, Chris. That's a great idea. And if I can help at all, please let me know. You will love it, um, especially for sewing for kids. If you sew for a lot of kids, oh my goodness, it saves so much time or bags or um, your own tried and true patterns that are worth the time to adjust so that you can go back to them later. Um, just slap it on the projector and cut, you know, it's super easy. Now I have to go find a paper pattern and all those things. So um, lots of, lots of good, uh, uh, good things and, you know, just nothing's perfect, I guess. All right, well, so any questions, you guys? And then we can chit-chat more for a little bit. Sorry for, you know, being, I guess, structured more today, but I'm trying to make them worth people's time to watch back. So um, if you um, are itching to talk and just chit-chat, we can do that here at the end. Um, hopefully this is helpful though. I, I do want these to be helpful. Yes, ma'am. For kids, it is perfect. <laughs> Barbara has too many hobbies. You know, most of us do because creative people just gravitate toward more creativity. And I, uh, yeah, I, my sister-in-law was over here laughing at me. She said, I haven't seen your sewing room. So I brought her up here. And I showed her the projector and I showed her my sublimation printer and I showed her my heat press, you know, and she said, is there any machine that you don't have? <laughs> I said, I don't know. Maybe I, oh yeah, I don't have, I have a cover stitch, but I don't have one of those snazzy ones. So maybe, I don't know, but it was kind of funny. She goes, don't you have everything? Um, I have the, uh, what is it called? Viv Image 2. And it's from Amazon, and it cost me $99, I think. Not too much money. Um, Amazon has quite a few that are in a lower price range. And you'll see, um, check the ratings, because some are really liked by people who sew, and some are not. Um, this Viv Image 2 seemed to be the one that everyone was getting. Uh, so that's what I got, and I'm very, very happy with it. Um, I love it too because it will, um, it's, it's wireless, so I can do over Wi-Fi with either my iPad or my MacBook, um, and it works super well. So um, I actually like using my iPad more than my MacBook because um, my MacBook tends to make the display bigger and not, you know, I can't see um, it doesn't change the display, um, of course, because that's calibrated. But on the, the screen, um, the iPad has more of an overview that you can actually find stuff a little easier. Um, but you can use either one. <laughs> yes, very many fun, expensive things to do. And as I get older, I just, you know, I'm going to buy it. You know, if I want it, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I have the ultimate excuse though. I need it for my channel, right? So I can review it for my channel. <laughs> um, I, I actually have a Cricut. I had a silhouette. I bought the Cricut Maker when it came out because it is by far better. Um, there's a few things with silhouette that were not that great. Uh, I loved it. But um, I had three different ones at one time, um, you know, 
different upgrades. But then when Cricut started, um, it was it's just so much easier. So I like my Cricut a lot. All right, this lady, I don't know who she is or what they're doing. I'm so sorry, you guys. There's always got to be a troll, you know? So terrible. So, Chris has a Cricut Explorer and finally used it to cut fabric. Yeah, it's great for cutting fabric. So is the silhouette, though. I cut fabric on my silhouette. Um, but, yeah, it's great for, especially if you're cutting, like, little things, like, you know, putting together Christmas ornaments or um, Barbie doll clothes. Uh, little doll clothes that fit that actually fit on the the twelve by twelve mat. Um, it's great. Just great. This is terrible. All right. I don't know how to block this lady completely, but this is really bad. All right. Sorry, guys. We had a little bit of a inappropriate person cre uh, creeping in here. Doll clothes on the cutting mat. Yep, for sure. Uh, bought the Cricut Maker a year ago and still haven't had time to open the box. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's there's a. Uh, quite a few people that do that. I've done that in the past where I bought something and just wasn't the time. So the time is now. It's not a big deal. Um, open it up. Get it out. If you need help, there's like so many people um, on the Facebook group, on our Facebook group that can help you. I can help you, but there's other people too. And, you know, get you up and running. This is really fun. I am doing that series on t-shirts and how to, uh, six different ways to sort of embellish a t-shirt. Um, I'm filming that now, finally. Uh, it's been on, I've been talking about it forever because I had, you know, I had a uh, vacation and then I had uh, medical things. So, but anyway, I, I still am doing it and um, I'm gonna be showing you how to up, uh, do heat transfer vinyl on the Cricut, how to do screen printing, uh, making a template, with the Cricut, or not screen printing, silk screening. And I'm also going to show you how to do sublimation on polyester. Um, there are other things you can do it on, but um, the simplest is polyester, so I'm gonna show you that. Um, I'm not gonna be how-to on everything. I'm just kinda gonna show you what's possible, and then if, if enough people say, hey, I really wanna learn about that method, then I'll go into more detail and do a full video on that. But there's people who have whole channels dedicated to this stuff. Um, so then I'm going to do, let me see, I forgot the order. Hang on. Doop, doop. Mm, let's see. Notes. <laughs> So those were the first three. Come on. Crazy. All right. Mm. 
Sorry, guys. I'm embellished each there. It's okay. Um, so it's going to be a, uh, heat transfer vinyl, silk screening, distress painting, um, sublimation, rhinestones, um, tie dye. We're going to talk about um, applique, um, changing a neckline, and embroidery. So there you go. Um, gonna, that's going to be a series. It's probably going to be three parts. And I will show you all of that, hopefully. <laughs> So, lots of fun. Thank you so much. Hi, Ivy. Oh, yes, I do know your stories. I didn't know that was you. <laughs> when I said that, yeah, I know another person who did that. I was talking about you. <laughs> oh, dear, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, you do already have it. And that's exactly what I've told you before. Just, you know, hang on to it. There will be a season. You know, seasons of life come and go. And there's nothing we can really do um, to change that. And um, all we can do is just, you know, lean on the Lord through it. And right now I'm in a season where it's difficult to do a lot of sewing. It's difficult to do a lot of uh, anything physical. Um, and... I'm doing my best because I know at the end of this, there's going to be um, a brighter day. So, um, and I'll be able to once again, I mean, I made 20 things in January. <laughs> so, and then, you know, I started getting worse with my back and, you know, that was, yeah. So just all got to hang in there through the season. It's very similar, Verna. Um, there's a few things that I think it might do better with fabric than the other ones. Um, I'm not really sure what kind of files it takes, but yeah, it is a, a good one. Yeah, the distress painting. I've done a few uh, like Ohio State shirts that I've just done the distressed painting. And it, you can make it look really authentic. <laughs> you know, it, there are these things that do require learning, but I don't know about you, but that's what I thrive on is learning how to do something new. Um, if I ever stop learning how to do something new, you know, I, I'll be done, you know. So I'm pretty sure that if you're a creative person, you're probably would get, it would be more in, in energizing to you than tiring. Does that make sense? Oh, right, Joy. Um, Joy Bernhard uses the scan and cut. Yep, she does. She's fun to watch. She's so silly. <laughs> Oh, good, Barbara. Thank you. I'm glad. Whoop. Sorry, guys. Didn't mean to go too far there. <laughs> Hi, Brenda. Nice to have you. So, hope everyone's doing well. So, what are you sewing this week, guys? I'm still working on pants. <laughs> My husband's two pair of pants, one shorts and one pair of pants. Um, welt pockets are, I'm like crazy about welt pockets now. <laughs> I'm going to put them in everything. <laughs> um, okay, new patterns this week. I saw a few. Um, Ellie and Mac has a new blazer. That's for stable knits. Looks really cute. Similar to the Metra, but this one has pockets right here. When I said pockets, that's, you know, because I I said pockets made me think of that um, blazer. They also came out with the sort of a roundup of doll clothes that you can buy one pattern and have a lot of their doll clothes. Um, let's 
see what else. <sighs> Trying to think. Um, I know I saw it. Maybe they were just new to me, though. I did pin some stuff on Pinterest. I'm trying to uh, be a little more active on my Pinterest for you guys, too. It's another place that we can share links of things. So let me just find my... I was looking for patterns that I could wear over my back brace. So... Um, I just want to see my board. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, the um the Piper by Sinclair. I don't think that's new, but it really looks like I could um, wear that over a brace. Hang on, let me find it. Okay, here's the Piper. Hang on, let me sh share my screen so you can see these. Mm -hmm. All right, here's the Piper which is um, sort of a, got like a yoke and then it's gathered right there. And I think with the gathers, I probably will be able to fit it, my brace underneath it. And then this other one, um, paper cut. Let me find it. And let me find the, this is, dresses, all right, here we go. The Ashling blouse and dress. This is what I thought would be really cute. Um, you could make it in a top form, which I probably would. I probably wouldn't wear a short dress like that, but um, isn't that cute? Excuse me. Isn't that adorable? I think that would be really cute. I like love this little ruffle that it has. Really adorable. So that was one I found. And, and forget me not had one. They had the Lola. Let's see. Top patterns. Yes, here's the Lola. I thought this one would be pretty cool as well. You can see, well, there's one one view of it that's just like that, but there is also a detail in the back like this, if you like it, which I think is just adorable. And then you could just not belt it and, you know, have 
it just hang. I guess that's probably like that. It's just in the back. So you could either do the, the straight seam or you could do a ruffle, which I thought was pretty fun. All right. Let's see. Look at the comments here. See what's going on. Oh, you bought the Piper. Good. It is cute. Hi, Nikki. Good to see you. Uh, let's get back to the... There we go. Now I can get down here and see all of y'all. <laughs> to the bottom here. Ah, you guys are both from Israel. That's awesome. I like the Lola a lot. Definitely. The Donna has to go. Take care. Get some rest tonight, and we'll see you soon, okay? Take care. Of that. Take care. All right, let's see what else is happening here. Um... Yeah, it's probably going to be short enough for you. Uh, me too, Brenda. I love it too. Oh, definitely, Barbara. I actually have spinal stenosis, and that is why I'm having the surgery. I have three, four, and five. Four is almost totally occluded, and... Um, I can't stand up without my legs going numb, so I didn't really have a choice. Um, not much choice as far as whether or not to have it fixed. Um, when I stand four slides over five and what wasn't occluded before, that does it. So, um, yeah, same problem as me. So, um, I'll let you know how the surgery goes, <laughs> but um, I've had back surgeries before, so I kind of know what to expect, but they were not near as um, involved as this one. Well, my neck one was, but you know, your neck only has to have the weight of your head, right? When you have it in your lower back, you've got the whole upper torso sitting on it, so um, that's a little bit more... You know, yeah. <laughs> Barbara says she needs sleeves. <laughs> she needs sleeves to cover her arms. Well, I, you know, I always say I don't have the right to bear arms, but you know, when it's hot enough, I, I'll, I'll, I will, I'll do sleeveless. Not in church. <laughs> Oh, I have some good news, y'all. Y'all who know me know that I'm a worship director at my church, which is a big, big, big job. And um, I've been thinking for a while that I'm 64 and possibly the young people should be like moving up into leadership. And I probably need to step back just so that, um, you know, that give them a chance. And I did, um, the gentleman that I thought would be really good has agreed to do it. So I'm very excited to sort of ease him in to leadership and um, leave it in really good hands. And, you know, I, it's not that I'm not going to participate anymore, but I think the leadership needs to go to the next generation. So I'm excited about that. That's an answer to prayer for sure. So, oh, that's funny. Mine was a slip disc in my neck, though. I was younger when that happened, and I didn't have stenosis then, but I probably do now. <laughs> um, but my lower back, I also had a herniated disc 20 years ago, and they just did a discectomy. So um, the, this one's going to be way bigger than that, but... It'll be all right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, yeah, for sure. I agree, Crystal. All of those tops are super cute. Let's see. What was uh, this other one that I just loved? I don't remember who's. Oh, yeah. The April from 
um, from Forget Me Not. Let me find it. Where's the search bar? All right. Oh, here it is, April. I think this one's super cute. Let me share it. Isn't that a cute one? And you don't have to tie it if you don't want to. You can leave it. Um, you can leave it like that. There's other views here. Let me make them bigger so you can see. Okay, there we go. Let's see, that's tighter, but you see if you didn't have that belt on, it would be flowing away from your body a little bit. It has those cool little uh, wiggly lines. Kind of a neat seam there. So, Because um, then I could always um, use the belt after I can, don't need my brace anymore. So that's some a thought. I thought that one might be cute as well. And let's see. So that was just some of the ones I saw. But I think they were pretty cool. Anyway. Definitely, definitely always praise the Lord. How are you doing today, J Joey? Yep, I thought it did too, Brenda. Definitely. I love those seams like that, where it's just kind of a squiggly line. Um, I'll probably be reviewing a lot of these patterns on my videos, so stay tuned. <laughs> And if, you know, I don't know, would it be, do you think, appropriate to make a video about how to dress for, you know, some kind of orthopedic appliance? Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one in the world that has to do that for a bit. So um, I have to do something for a wedding now because <laughs> my nephew is getting married in San Antonio. Well, he's getting married in Colorado, but they're having a Texas reception um, on June 25th, and I am going to fly down there to go to the party. Um, I will only be six weeks post-op, and we'll still have my brace. So I don't know what I'm going to make for the wedding. Maybe that dress would be super cute um, that I just showed you. you could do it in a couple of cute prints or something. I think it would be neat. <laughs> Yep, definitely. Yeah, I think that April is beautiful. You guys got me talked into that. <laughs> Beige dress was... It was paper cut. And hang on, let me find it. The Ashling Blouse by Paper Cut Patterns is that one. They have a lot of them. Also, the Barden dress, have you seen that from Peppermint Magazine? It's free. That's a pretty cute one, too. And would be a fun summer dress no matter what. On, let me find it here and I'll pull it up for you. So here's the, the Barden dress, and it's just, uh, it's super cute. Let's see if I can, make, I guess it doesn't let you make it bigger. I'll just go through the, I don't know why it's spinning. <laughs> but 
anyway, it has tears and it does have, you know, a nice, um, it's nice. It, it won't show your bra strap. And you can see it's got plenty of room there at that sort of waist area. And pockets, which are always good. But I think it's an, a really nice dress. Make it bigger here. I can I can see wearing that for sure. Um, might not do the second tier and just make that one tier longer. It just depends on. Um, I don't want to look like a sixty-four year old trying to be seventeen. <laughs> so I don't know. Sometimes I think just ignore it because you just wear what you want to wear. Um, probably have a conversation with my husband about that because he's really nice and honest and and very insightful when it comes to things like that so I'll just chat with him about it before I make it he'll probably tell me to make it do the ruffle <laughs> it's like you know life is short make the ruffle eat the potato chips <laughs> buy all the fabric <laughs> anyway well, you guys, it is five o'clock and I have to go cook some dinner and um, get my evening going. So it's great to see you guys. And I hope that this was helpful um, and to anyone who is interested. I do have a playlist on how to set up a projector and how to use it. Um, I think there's four or five videos up there and it was just lacking this one and I thought doing it live would be kind of fun and I would uh, definitely love to hear um, your projector experiences and I would love if you have questions you can always go to the Facebook group the Facebook group is Dorothy's Daughter Community and we have about 18,000 members right now uh, I'm sorry, 1,800 members right now. So um, we would love to have you. If there's ever anything you definitely want me to see, um, comment on or answer a question, please tag me because there's a lot of, of a lot of posts that go by really fast, and I would hate to miss it. All right? Have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Happy sewing. Bye-bye. <laughs>